Hello and welcome to the Bible with Chris Doak 2023. I am your messenger of the word of God, Shannon Dora Briscoe. And today we're going to be covering Ezekiel 14 through 15 and James 2. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation in a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. When I doubt the church condemned Ezekiel 14, some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I let them inquire of me at all? Therefore, speak to them and tell them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When any of the Israelites set up idols in their hearts and put a wicked wicked stumbling block before their faces, and then go to a prophet. I, the Lord, will answer them myself, in keeping with their great idolatry. I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people of Israel, who have all deserted me for their idols. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Repent, turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. When any of the Israelites or any foreigner residing in Israel separate themselves from me and set up idols in their hearts and put a wicked stumbling block before their faces and then go to a prophet to inquire of me, I, the Lord, will answer them myself. I will set my face against them and make them an example and a byword. I will remove them from my people. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet is enticed to utter a prophecy, I, the Lord, will have enticed that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. They will bear their guilt, and the prophet will be as guilty as the one who consulted him. Then the people of Israel will no longer stray from me, nor will they defile themselves any more with all their sins. They will be my people, and I will be their God, declares the Sovereign Lord. Jerusalem's judgment in susceptible. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, if a country sins against me by being unfaithful, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its food supply, and send famine upon it, and kill its people, and their animals. Even if these three men, Noah, David, and Job, were in it, they could save only themselves by their righteousness, declares the Sovereign Lord. Or, if I send wild beasts through that country, and they leave it childless, and it becomes desolate so that no one can pass through it because of the beasts. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They alone would be saved. But the land would be desolate. 
Or if I bring a sword against that country and say, let the sword pass throughout the land, and I kill its people and their animals, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons or daughters, they alone would be saved. Or if I send a plague into the land, <laughs> and, and pour out my wrath on it through bloodshed, killing its people and their animals, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save not, neither son nor daughter. They would save only themselves by their righteousness. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. How much worse will it be when I send against Jerusalem my four death, dreadful judgments, sword and famine, and wild beasts and plague, to kill its men and their animals, and yet there will be some survivors, sons of, and daughters, who will be brought out of it, and they will come to you, and when you see their conduct and their actions, you will be consoled regarding their disaster I have brought on Jerusalem. Every disaster I have brought on it, you will be consoled when you see the conduct and their actions, for you will know that I have done nothing in it without cause, declares the Sovereign Lord. Jerusalem as a useless vine. Ezekiel 15. Jerusalem as a useless mind, Ezekiel 15. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. How is the wood of a vine different from that of a branch from any of the trees in the forest? It would, is wood ever taken from it to make anything useful? Do, the, do they make pegs from it? to hang things on, and after it is thrown on the fire as fuel, and the fire burns both ends and chars the middle, is it then useful for anything? If it was not useful for anything, when it was whole, how much less can it be made into something useful when the fire has burned it? And it's charred. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. As I have given the wood of the vineyards and the vine among the trees of the forest as fuel for the fire, so will I treat the people living in Jerusalem. I will set my face against them. Although they have come out of the fire, the fire will yet consume them. And when I set my face against them, you will know that I am the Lord. I will make the land desolate because they have been faithful, unfaithful. I will make the land desolate because they have been unfaithful, declares the sovereign Lord. And that was Ezekiel 14 through 15. And now we will be turning to James. Two. Favoritism forbidden. Give me a second, folks.
Don't even have time to pause the camera out. Okay, favoritism forbidden. James 2. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here is a good seat for you, but then to the poor man you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor? in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and inherit the world and the king to inherit the kingdom of promised he promised to those who love him but you have dishonored the poor it is not the rich who are exploiting you are they not the ones who are dragging you into court are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble man or the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, you, your neighbors, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you are sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, You shall not commit adultery, also said, You shall not murder. And if you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. And speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Faith and deeds. What good is it? My brothers and sisters, if not someone claimed to have faith, but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one who says they have to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In that same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by actions, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was God.
called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without deeds is dead and so that was that it was uh, James 2 which includes the Bible with verse 2 2023 for today tomorrow we will be covering Ezekiel 16 through 17 and James 3 Father I just thank you for your word because without your word I would not be able to be your messenger of the word and so I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus mighty name Amen and they all said Amen I'd like to thank you folks for tuning into the Bible with Verse 2023 for today. I, Senator Joel Brisco, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So please like and share. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Amen. Amen.